Hello everybody, this is Fikstra and today we're going to talk about disaster movies. The 1970s was the golden era for disaster movies, where, you know, some were very good and some were very lame and some were very terrible and some of them was just a little bit... Eh. And one of the more curious ones of the disaster movies was the aircraft disaster movies. And the kings of those was, of course, the airport movies starring George Kennedy. They made, you know, the, the first airport movie was not really a classical disaster movie, but it made enough money so that they thought that there was more interest in air disaster things. So they made Airport 1975, then they made Airport 77. And 1979, they made the fourth movie about the Concorde. The Concorde, you know, uh, a aircraft type that isn't used today, but still it's probably one of the most beautiful piece of aviation things I've ever seen. The problem with this movie, regardless if you're calling it Airport 79, Airport 80, Concorde, Airport 79 or whatever, is that this movie is dumb. This movie is a hundred percent mega dumb. And just to show you how terrible the idea behind this movie is, when this movie was released in the United States for the first time, people unintentionally laughed at it. People howled with laughter at this movie. So, what did Universal do about it? They tried to re-release it a while later as a comedy. That is not a very good start for your movie. Let's take a look and see if we can find anything that uh, resembles a good disaster movie out of this one. This is the Concorde Airport 79. Dr. Kevin Harrison has a problem. Maggie, played by Susan Blakely, is a journalist who has discovered that he is doing some shady business and illegal arms things and, you know, selling weapons to communist countries and other horrible things. And now he's going to try to stop her from, you know, releasing these documents. Uh, she's boarding a plane that's going to go to Moscow for the, uh, you know, Olympics. Uh, and he's going to try to take down the Concorde and, you know, stop them from releasing uh, the papers and, you know, save his company and stuff like that. And if you're thinking, that seems a little dumb, it's because it is! This movie relies rather heavily that you're supposed to take this serious. You're supposed to take this super dumb concept serious and it really doesn't work for a number of reasons. The movie is stupid. It is one of the dumbest scripts I have ever seen. The other problem this movie has is that it is terribly acted, it is woefully written, and the special effects are terrible. Many of the 1970s disaster movies has aged rather terrible, but this one, oof, this is bad. I mean, if that wasn't enough, the movie is one hour and 53 minutes long and it just keeps going and it is so slow and it is so, you know, it, the movie drags and drags and it just won't stop ever. And the other problem is, of course, that because this story is so stupid, you're thinking, why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing this? Despite having, you know, some pretty, you know, knowledgeable names in this one, Robert Wagner, you know, George Kennedy, and Alain Delon, absolute French superstar. This was his last attempt of, you know, becoming a big star in Hollywood. He probably should have, you know, aimed for another movie than fucking Concorde Airport 79. It's difficult to see that, you know, a bunch of Academy Award winning actors are struggling with this stupid ass script because the, the, the concept is so laughable and the execution is so laughable and some of the, you know, 70s disaster cliches that are here, all of these old and abused cliches leaves this movie broke, busted and disgusted and I just want it to end. And finally it ends. You're thinking to yourself, could this be any dumber? And then it kind of becomes even dumber. 
You also think that 15 million dollars, which was this movie's budget, 15 million dollars in 1979 was quite a lot of money actually, and should have been enough to, you know, at least make this movie to at least look okay. But now I don't know how this movie looked to the 1979 audience, but to the 2022 audience, uh, this movie looks awful. The special effects are so terrible and it just drags on and you're just bored. And because the characters act like stupid children, you just, you just don't care. It just looks like a bad TV movie with bad special effects and terrible writing. Also, I should probably mention one thing that I don't like the term so bad that it is good. If a movie is good, it is good. If a movie is bad, it is bad. Even if a movie is stupid, has you know, bad acting, it, it can still be a good movie. But a movie that is just bad, it's just bad. That's just me, I guess. This slow, ugly looking, cheap looking disaster movie cannot get any more than 11 points. Avoid this. If you want to see a good airport movie, I don't think there is one. But I think that Airport 75 is actually the best of the bunch. But at least this is a passable movie with a concept that could happen even though it is kind of stupid and very predictable and kind of cliched. But it still kind of works. This movie though, not so much. So which one is your favorite of the airport movies? Comment below and I'll see you next time from so-and-so reviewing well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.